Um, thank you once again for the opportunity. Uh, my name is Patrick McRoy. I'm the Deputy Director of Defend Our Health. Uh, in addition to our organization's work on lead poisoning, uh, I personally have a deep background in lead poisoning prevention. Uh, prior to joining Defend, I served as the Director of the Lead Poisoning Prevention Program uh, for the City of Chicago. Uh, Defend Our Health believes that the rules as proposed by the department, while desperately needed, are inadequate to protect children's health, and therefore uh, we are in opposition to this bill. Uh, we believe we urge this committee to require amendments uh, that we've detailed more in my written submission. Uh, lead is, as you have heard, a potent neurotoxin. It robs children of their potential by irreversibly damaging their brain and lowering their IQ. Uh, and both health scientists and federal agencies recognize that there is no safe level of lead. And that is why the American Academy of Pediatrics has called for a standard of one part per billion in school drinking water. Uh, unfortunately, the, the uh, department did not heed the Academy's recommendation uh, it instead borrowed a level of 15 uh, that the federal government uses for water utilities. It's important to recognize though that this standard was never intended to be health protective. Uh, that's very clear in the documentation from the US EPA. Instead, it reflects what water utilities can achieve by making water uh, non-corrosive. Uh, unlike utilities, though, schools have other options for how to address actual taps. In most cases, we are not talking about the water in the entire school. We are talking about specific taps that are problematic. And in some cases, a solution may be as simple and as cost effective as just disconnecting that particular tap. So given that the level of 15 is not health protective and that it's feasible for schools to achieve lower levels, it's no surprise that other states have set lower levels for school drinking water. Uh, Vermont has theirs at four, Washington, Washington DC and Illinois use a level of five. Uh, Maine should also set a lower level. Uh, additionally, the rule has a serious problem in recommending that schools flush out their pipes the day before testing. Uh, this sounds innocuous, but has a very real world impact. Uh, this was demonstrated in New York, where the city first used a similar protocol, but after experts and concerned parents protested, the city reversed course and tested without a flush. Nine times as many taps were identified as problematic when they were tested without flushing. Uh, the rules should therefore prohibit, not recommend flushing. Uh, additionally, we would suggest that when the legislature passed the law requiring this rule, it clearly intended for testing to be a regular affair, uh, yet the rules are only requiring a single test. Uh, because lead levels may fluctuate over time in response to changes in water chemistry or remodeling, uh, there should be ongoing monitoring uh, as the law intended and the rules amended to require uh, routine sampling. Uh, finally, it is essential that parents and staff promptly learn about potential problems so they can act. Uh, the department gives schools 10 days to share results. Uh, federal rules, however, would require notification within 24 to 72 hours uh, if the test had been done by utilities, uh, and we suggest that same standard be applied to schools. Um, additional information is in our written materials, uh, and we are happy to provide any additional information the committee would find helpful, uh, either right now or uh, later for your work session. Uh, thank you very much.